God. And tomorrow, if the sun don't shine, I know that you're forever mine, so I'm forever yours. Deep in the Louisiana Bayou, Cody Fleming is celebrating his freedom. They treated me like I was lost. That's when I studied the rules of wrong and right. But soon just... After 19 long years, he's finally on the better side of a jail cell, trying to make up for lost time. I don't worry about tomorrow because she's today and even over yet. And chasing a record career with all he has. My mission is to go double platinum, gold and good enough for your living room wall. Damn, his that? rhymes are his protest to the scales of justice that sent him here to Angola one of the most violent prisons in America. What do you say about whether or not it was fair and right and just? The only thing that was unfair was the sentence. Hmm. Life. The life sentence. The life sentence. He got more than a life sentence. A Louisiana court sent him to prison forever with no chance of parole after he was convicted in 2004 for selling three pieces of crack cocaine to an undercover police officer. It's a crime he says he owns and in most cases would have sent him to jail for as few as two years. But this was his third drug conviction. They were all nonviolent crimes, but with number three, the prosecutor was able to charge him as a habitual felony offender. Under Louisiana law, the judge had no choice but to throw the book at Cody Fleming and sentence him to die in prison. Well, my, my daughter's mother was behind me. On, she was on the floor screaming and hollering, so I had to really show strength. But my mind was on like, life, <laughs> what, what do you mean? He shared a cell block with 85 men. He says it's the only place where he's ever had to watch someone die. You get to Angola now, and there are other inmates who are doing life sentences. But what are they doing life sentences for? Rape, robbery, murder, distribution of marijuana. That was my best friend. He, he sold $5 worth of marijuana three times and got a life sentence. Three strikes and you're out. The expression is about as American as the baseball diamonds from where it came. And four to two. And it was former President Bill Clinton who signed what was famously known as the Three Strikes Law when he put his signature on the federal crime bill of 1994. <laughs> and one of the proud lawmakers whose hand he shook immediately after signing that law was none other than its author in the U.S. Senate, our current president, Joe Biden. The law was an answer to 1992, when crack cocaine was an epidemic in the streets and America recorded more violent crimes than ever before. Soon there was a rush of about two dozen state legislatures passing strong repeat offender laws, and in many cases refusing to make any difference between violent and nonviolent criminals. Critics called this another example of a judicial system that's bent against brown and black people. In a famous case out of Louisiana involving a stolen pair of hedge clippers, a black state Supreme Court justice wrote that these long sentences are the modern manifestation of racist laws passed by southern states after the Civil War that were largely designed to re-enslave African Americans. The nine justices of the U.S. Supreme Court had their official photo taken today. But in 2003, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that however harsh, these habitual offender laws are constitutional, agreeing with the state of California and ruling against Gary Ewing. He was a career thief who was sentenced to life after stealing a set of golf clubs. In 2012, he died in prison. Today, both the former and current president regret passing that federal law. I signed a bill that made the problem worse. And I want to admit it. Most of these people are in prison under state law, but the federal law set a trend. And that was overdone. We were wrong about that. Was it a mistake to support it? Yes, it was. But here's, the, here's where the mistake came. The mistake came in terms of what the states did locally. In the last few years, a number of states have started walking back their repeat offender laws just a bit. And Louisiana is one of them, allowing certain nonviolent repeat offenders to go home. It's how this man, Barney Holt, was able to leave Angola prison last year, where he was serving a life sentence for three drug convictions. 
Kat Forrester and the lawyers from a group called the Innocence Project New Orleans are the people who helped set him free. Barney spent 12 years in prison. He was given the habitual offender law and sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. Last year, the state started allowing prisoners serving long sentences under repeat offender laws a way out of prison. If their crimes were nonviolent, they can now ask a parole board to let them out, but only if they've already served at least 15 years. We represent people during their parole hearings. We prep them, we work with their family members. We... You also then set up, don't you initiate the parole hearing too? Yes. It's how they set Cody Fleming free. December 15th, 2022. Walk me through, was it cold that day? No. It was warm. Warm. The sun seems brighter. The air seems warmer. They say you never know what you got until it's gone. And they take your freedom away. You, you see how valuable it was to you. The walls in this New Orleans law office are a bittersweet hall of fame. Here's Cody Fleming. There's Barney Holt, and this is Thomas Swinner, who was in for life after a marijuana conviction, a drug that became legal in large parts of this country while he was in jail. There's one picture they ask our cameras to linger on, and it's of 63-year-old James Baker, who was in for drugs and walked away from a life sentence in February. They say he had no idea the law had changed in his favor until the lawyers here happened to discover his case. There are at least 100 people that we know of who are eligible under the new rules for parole. And these are people who are convicted of crimes in which no one was hurt. And it sounds like you've got uh, prosecutors who are willing to work with you now. There are a number of prosecutors in Louisiana who are willing to work with us, absolutely. Thank Welcome you. to the city. Yes. Thank you, thank you. One of those prosecutors is this New Orleans district attorney who promised that he would never use the state's habitual offender law when he ran for office. How many of those cases roughly who you've gotten out of jail who were in jail for long prison sentences? Oh, there are dozens. There are do dozens of men and women who were in jail for sentences that probably would have been closer to a year, three years, five years. The habitual offender law was absolutely used in a racist in equitable way. Jason Williams is a former defense lawyer with former clients who he says were unfairly sentenced. We have a, a very robust victim survivor outreach program. So we reach out to the victims and we let them know uh, that we're reviewing the case, why we're reviewing the case. Many times victims uh, and survivors weren't even aware that the habitual offender law was gonna be used in their case. What we're trying to do is just uh, inject a bit of humanity uh, into the criminal legal system. But he admits that just two years into office, he had to break his promise when he helped send a man to jail for life, a violent repeat offender who raped a young woman. I believe some people need to be in jail. Let me be very clear about that. It is the job of a prosecutor to decide who those folks are and to decide who does not need to be in jail. I can tell you that there was a campaign promise not to use habitual offender law. But there's also an oath of office and there's a mandate uh, to do the job and live up to that mandate. Yeah. Cody Fleming says it may sound surprising, but he's not mad at the world. He's more upset with himself and what this did to his family. It's really the family that held me through prison. Yeah, family, friends, they, they, shared, they shared the prison sentence with me. I think that each of the people that we freed from prison has something to share with the world. Some of their gifts are more overt, you know, and some of them, I think, are more subtle. Sometimes it's somebody's sense of humor or their smile or the impact that it has on their family to have them home. It wasn't a day that went by I didn't think about you and my sisters. It's the message he now pours into his music as he struggles to put his life back together, that he will never again put himself before the mercy of the system. What gives you joy right now? Just sit in a bathtub with candles lit, with bubbles everywhere, <laughs> listening to music out loud instead of with headphones on. That's what gives me joy, freedom. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.